For years, my trusty Oakley Sutros have been my go-to glasses, and it's been hard to find a replacement until now. We've come up with some of the best new sunglasses, so stick around. Sunglasses are a very personal choice, but when it comes to cycling, there's some key features I cannot live without. We looked at several different brands from 100%, Koo, and Pac, and looked at their latest offerings. Let's go ahead and get started with the first pair. These are the Pac Aspire. Now these are worn by the EF Pro Cycling team, among others. And these feature a couple of key things. They have very wide arms, as well as a pretty wide view to look through. I found that these fit on my face well, but I did notice when the going gets tough, they do tend to slide down the bridge of my nose a little bit. These Aspires look good. In fact, they're one of the most best looking. And in terms of the lens itself, these are great for very sunny days. Uh, if you don't like people looking into your eyes, these hide your eyes pretty well. Now these retail for $220, and this is on the high side of things, but I do like the fact that these are built really well. They're solid and they come in multiple colors. I like this muted grayish, almost like a brown tint, and then this gold-like lens on top of it. These look good both for road, gravel, and pretty much anything else. Again, my only gripe about it is that while these probably are one of my best looking pair that I've been riding with, on hot and sunny days or days where I would get sweaty, these would tend to creep down the bridge of your nose and I'd have to push them up in order for it to stay on. In terms of the lens itself, it does lend itself to bright conditions as the lens is kind of dark. So on really sunny days, these work great. Uh, they cover a lot of area and I think these are probably the best looking pair of sunglasses out of the bunch that we have. The next pair we have are from Pac. These are the Propels. Now, these are their aero optimized sunglasses. If you can see all the way around, they do wrap around quite a bit, which goes into their aero theme. Now, they do say that when you pair this with their helmet, it provides the most amount of aero optimization, other than, of course, like a time trial helmet and glasses. These are still good all around though for riding. A couple of features to note here is they don't have a frame on the top end of the lens. They do have the frame that goes along the bottom. And then if you turn it to the side and look at the arms, these arms actually expand and contract according to the width of your face or cranium, however you wanna take a look at it. But these are definitely the most daft punk, the most futuristic kind of sunglasses out there. Um, these again work great in sunny conditions. They offer this silver mirror-like finish. Uh, they're good for hiding your eyes and they do wrap around. It is kind of annoying because they cover a lot of area when you wanna scratch your face or scratch the bridge of your nose, it's hard to get to. These do stay on though a lot better than the previous ones uh, and these even when your head's rocking back and forth they stay on there i have not tried it with the pock helmet honestly i could care less about aerodynamics if i really wanted it aero i'd get one of those weird new giro time trial helmets that makes you look like uh, like you have a massive head but these are great uh, for just all around maybe the aero advantage is more of a psychological boost than anything but in terms of uh, the sun protection and the design, these are definitely the widest coverage, definitely the most futuristic if you're into that sort of thing. Now, these retail as our most expensive sunglasses at $270 a pair, that's a lot. But if you take your eyewear seriously, uh, these are the glasses to go with. The next pair of glasses are from 100%. It's a local San Diego based company, but they have a worldwide reach. These are the Hypercraft SQ sunglasses. If you could pick a pair out of the bunch that is the minimalist pair, these would be the ones. Now they don't have a frame that cover the top or the bottom of the lens. They do have these sort of rubber tips at the ends of the arms that help keep them in place. I like the look of them. When they're on, 
they don't really feel like they're on. It feels like you're not wearing anything. And these are the cheapest of the bunch at $149. Now, when you get these, you get the most bang for your buck because every pair of Pox come with not only the stock lens that comes with it, but they also come with a clear lens if you're riding in very low light conditions. These Hypercraft are very popular. If you go to the website, they have a ton of other colors. I like the classic white as they tend to go with everything. Uh, these stay on the nose really well. They, again, don't feel like that you have anything on and they do have these two vent holes right here at the top to prevent from anti-fog. Now in terms of the lens, again, these are optimized for very sunny conditions. When you put them on, uh, it's perfect when the sun's directly overhead. Uh, I do find that I do take them off from time to time and stick them on the top of the helmet as well. But 100%, if you live in Southern California especially, can be found on just about every other rider. They're a very popular brand here, and of course very big in the cycling space as well. Our next pair comes from the Italian brand Coup. Now it's the same company that is owned by Cask. These are the Spectro and these go for $190. Now, if we went from minimalist, these are probably maximalist. These cover a lot of the face. The frames are big and bulky. There are vents both at the top and the bottom to prevent uh, from fogging up. And these arms have a hinge on it that has a little bit of resistance, but once you go past them, they close up. And then as you open them, there's a little bit of resistance and then they stay locked in place. Now these have a rubber tip on the end. In terms of look, this kind of covers a large area of the face, but they narrow up on the edges. These are the uh, blue turquoise pair. And then in terms of the lens, I find that I wear these quite a bit because it does get sunny in Southern California. These lenses do optimize for some sunnier conditions, although I have worn them in low light. Now again, the nose piece uh, is solid. These can work in a number of conditions. You definitely feel them when they're on your face, but when they are on your face, they do stay on. Um, these are probably the most popular model that they make, uh, and it is worn by a number of pros in the Peloton. Now, if you want a smaller version, Ku makes a model called the Demos. Now these don't cover as much on the face, but they pretty much have all the same features as the Spectro. It has the vents on the top and bottoms as well, but these were originally, I think, marketed more for gravel or off-road. To me, it makes no difference because these stay so well on the face and so do the previous ones. Again, it has that rubber tip so it stays on there and the hinges are very solidly built. Now, for some of you, the looks are a little bit more minimal here. They don't cover as much, but then I don't know if you need as much as well. Now, these definitely are a good go-to all-around pair. If you don't want the roady look and you're looking more for a casual pair, you could probably even get away with wearing these off the bike as well. These are also cheaper. Now these retail for $170, but I believe the lens in, in terms of looking through it is the same as the Spectro. And uh, these are, lenses are also easy to replace. These are a classic black and blue pair. Again, these kind of go with a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm sure with the paired with the cask helmet, which is also their company, it's made to look really well. These fit my face fine, but it, then again, I don't know if these are my favorite pair. It's just personal preference. The coverage is great, but I don't know if I love the look when I am on my road bike but these will do well in a variety of conditions. Lastly, Ku has this pair called the Alibi. Now these are a uh, different kind of sunglasses. They don't have the bottom part of the frame. It's more of a minimal look. They don't have the rubber tipped ends, but they do have these ridges on the arms, which still stay in place. Now these fit my face really well because it doesn't have that bottom part of the frame. It is not fogged up once and these are the Bora Hansgrohe edition. So if you're a fan of Primo's Roglic, you'll probably see him rocking these in some of the grand tours. Now in terms of the lens, it has to be the most versatile lens. It's a photochromic lens, which means that the lens changes color in lighting conditions. So if it's early in the morning or early in the evening, 
and it's dusk out and the sun's setting, these will actually go lighter. And then when the sun is at its most, these will get pretty dark. This is a great all around lens. And I wish all cycling brands has these as standard because you don't need to swap out to a clear lens or anything like that. This is the most expensive pair of the Koo range, which is $235. Um, but I do like the minimalist look. They're very light to the touch, yet the hinges are solidly built. When you look through that lens, depending on the conditions, it's actually pretty clear. Uh, but then as you stay out in the sun, it doesn't take that long to get dark. It takes just a few seconds and then these lenses will darken up. These are the photochromic lenses that um, are getting more popular as people are riding these year round. Can any of those beat the Oakley Sutro? And I've had these longer than I've had any of the other pair. And I'm proud to say, yes, the Oakley Sutro will always be a part of the Peloton. It's worn by many world tour pros and there's even different iterations of the Sutro. I have the classic white frame, full frame lenses here. But if I were to pick one that were to beat out the Sutro, I would say it's the Ku Alibi. These are the most versatile. I find myself reaching for these more than any other pair. I think they look good on the face as well as fit well. And then of course with the photochromic lenses, uh, I don't have to worry about is it too light or too dark. I can just put these on and these will adapt to the lighting conditions, which I think is super cool. I'm also a fan of Bora, so that doesn't hurt as well. It doesn't even have any Bora branding. It just has this little strip of the Bora colors along with this really cool frame. I would say if I had to pick between the Sutro and these, of course, I have both, so I'll probably wear both, but if I had to pick one, these are the new winners. Have you tried any of these sunglasses? And if so, what's your go-to brand and what do you like best? I know cycling and sunglasses are a very personal choice to some people. So you have to go with what works well with your face. For me, I like the Ku Alibi the best out of the bunch. We'll see what the future holds for these. If you like the channel, please subscribe, get the notifications for future videos. And until next time, this is Brian saying stay Velo worthy.